there's one hadith where Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala لَا يَمَلُّ حَتَّى تَمَلُّ So scholars interpret the, the hadith Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala doesn't get tired on, until you get tired Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala never gets tired but Allah will keep forgiving, He'll keep forgiving the day you stop asking for forgiveness is the day you will not receive the forgiveness so we have to keep on going, keep on going you're gonna stumble, you're gonna fall, make mistakes fall off the horse, get back on right? So these are the three conditions. When these three conditions are found, inshallah, then we're forgiven, inshallah. This is what the ulama say. This is Imam al we mentioning this in uh, the chapter of Tawbah in the Riyadh al-Salihin. Then he mentions a fourth condition. Now, if the sin itself is not in the category of what's called Hukukullah, the rights of Allah Ta'ala, but it's a sin, what's called Hukukul Ibad, the rights of people, then there's an extra condition. And that is that you make amends with the person that you have wronged. So if you said something wrong to a person, uh, they, they found out that you did some ghibah to them. You spoke badly about them behind their backs. So now you have to go to them. You have to say, I'm sorry for doing that. Now there, there's one thing we have to clarify. If we're habitual of ghibah nowadays, you know, it's very common. Imam al-Bukhari, he, he says that I don't, I have never done ghibah in my life. That's very deep. In today's time, can you imagine a person who's never spoken bad about another person in their, in their life? That's why in, in a jarh wa ta'adil, it's a field in hadith, uh, narrator criticism. He has his, he's very careful with his words, just so he, it, we won't count as backbiting. He's very careful with that. But say for instance, we have done uh, a ghibah, and, and the thing I wanted to highlight is, because we do it so often, we have to know this, that if we're guilty of, of doing a ghibah, and the person doesn't know, it still hasn't transferred into hukukul ibad. This is a very delicate point here. Uh, wh when you do a ghibah of a person, and perhaps you mention it, say, billah, I did it and, and I spoke uh, bad about Imam Sahib to Brother Ahmed. And now Imam Sahib doesn't know. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save me and everyone from doing such a ghibah. I shouldn't even use this example, but I used it. Uh, I, I, I said something bad about Imam Sab to Brother Ahmed. So now, before Imam Sab finds out, if I can go back to Brother Ahmed and, and, and I speak good about Imam Sab and I say, you know, what I said was wrong, that reflects my evil nature, has nothing to do with him. He's actually a great person, and then I change it, inshallah, that won't be counted as liba, and we stop it there. However, if I don't stop that, and, and somehow Imam Sab finds out, and his feelings are hurt, now it's transferred from Hukukullah to Hukukul Ibad. The rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because my, my misuse of my tongue is a right against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He gave me the tongue to do dhikr, not to speak bad about people. So if I didn't hurt the person's feelings yet, it still hasn't transferred fully. And so once Imam Sahib finds out, now I have to go to him, I have to make it right somehow. Somewhere or uh, another. Give him money, do something, right? Imam Sahib won't accept money yet. Uh, we'll give him a Quran or something. <laughs> or give him a kitab, inshallah. <laughs> but the wisdom behind this, you might be wondering, like, why is it like this? There's a lot of wisdom behind it. Is that if you now, how many people have we done ghibah of? And you just ask yourself. Don't tell me, please. <laughs> Maybe I'm one. <laughs> okay, so, no, I'm just joking. But how many people we've done ghibah of? If the only way to get forgiveness for that was to go to every single person we've done ghibah of, Number one, it's very difficult because we have to go to so many people. Number two, the person doesn't even know we did anything wrong. We're on good terms with them. You go to them and you say, that, hey man, I did some ghibah. Now he's gonna say, I'll forgive you, but tell me what it is. When you tell him what it is, then he's like, I don't forgive you. And then it's causing enmity now. So that is one of the wisdoms why this is like this. So if, if it has not transferred into hukuk al ibad and it's kind of also hard to figure out when that happens if the person is not letting you know so if you're sure they won't be upset by you letting them know you can let them know but it's just some fine points inshallah so uh, we, we don't you know destroy certain relationships inshallah so the, the fourth condition if this is between you and another person you have to fix that situation and then Imam Nawawi, he explains if it's wealth or some type of physical item that you have taken. Uh, if you have stolen it or you have borrowed it and you didn't give it back. Sometimes nowadays when we let someone borrow something, we have to borrow it back from them. Right? So 
because uh, people are not very, uh, you know, they, they don't give it back on time. So if it's something like that, you give it back to them. If, if the item is with you, you give the item back. If not, you give them back, you know, that remuneration, whatever amount it was. If you said something bad, like we were just talking about Liba, then you have to seek their forgiveness for it. And so basically you have to fix that. So that is uh, the, the fourth condition if it deals with other people. And in terms of hukukullah and hukukul ibad, the more serious one is hukukul ibad. Uh, messing with other people. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, we can hope for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us how merciful he is in his Quran. And then we have iman in that. And inshallah, like Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu is reported from him. He said that if there was an announcement on Qiyamah that only one person can go to Jannah, I have hope that's me. One person. That's high aspiration. And if there was an announcement on Qiyamah that one person is going to Jahannam, I fear that that's me. So the believer has a lot of hope and a lot of fear at the same time. Uh, there was this one statement of Luqman Hakim. They, they have some of his statements in the books. I don't know the chain of narration for them, but he was saying to his son that, oh son, you should have uh, complete fear of Allah and complete, complete hope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So his son said that it's like we need two hearts. He said, yes, a believer has two hearts. Full fear of Allah and full hope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive us, but people are not always like that. And so, hukukul ibad, did I mention the, the muflis hadith here? Or was it in the, okay, so I'll just mention that again. There's this one hadith very powerful hadith where Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa tells the sahaba atadari man in muflis do you people know who's bankrupt and so as Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa always uses very beautiful uh, statements uh, because he, he, he talks to them in, in terms that they know but he's referring to the, the akhirah so who's bankrupt so the sahaba said the person who doesn't have any money he's in debt he's bankrupt Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa says no he's not bankrupt the bankrupt person is the person that he will be on Qiyamah, he will have a mountain of A'mal. So much salah, zakah, salam, hajj, a mountain of A'mal. And so he'll be happy, I got, I got a mountain, and this guy doesn't have anything, this guy has nothing, I got a mountain. And then there will be a person that will come, and on Qiyamah, like I mentioned before, I don't know if I mentioned here, that the, the currency of Qiyamah is not dollars, it's not, you know, Taka or whatever, Canadian dollars. The, the, the currency of the hereafter is A'mal. That's really scary, either sin or A'mal. So a person will come and then he will say, oh Allah, this person wronged me. He hit me or he said something bad about me or he took my money or he did something to me. So then it will be told for this person that take some of that, that mountain that he has, take one salah. So he takes a salah and he goes. Now this is a person, he, he did this salah in dunya. And the real scary part is, in dunya we don't know what's accepted. This guy has accepted a'mal on qiyamah. I don't know if one salah of mine is accepted, we don't know. But on qiyamah he'll have a mountain, that means it was accepted. So then this person, the, the guy who he, he wronged, he'll come, he'll take an accepted salah and he'll go. Then this person who has this mountain, he sees a line of people. And now he's starting to sweat and he's like, okay, what's happening? Next person comes, he says, oh Allah, this person said this about me. It'll be told to him, take another accepted amal. He takes his amal, he goes. So many people are coming left and right. They're all coming and they're, they're taking their haq. They're not lying, this is Yawm al Qiyam. there's no lying. They're taking so much and his mountain diminishes, diminishes. There's nothing left. And this is Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam explaining the bankrupt person who has absolutely nothing. So now there's still people, there's still people and, and he has nothing left. And so the next person comes and then he says, oh Allah, this person wronged me, but he doesn't have any more a'mal left. So then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala him, don't worry, you have sin, take one of your sins and put it here. An unforgiven sin. So just like those accepted a'mal, this is a sin that was not forgiven. So he takes that sin, he puts it in his pile. Next person comes, this person wronged me, puts another one, puts another one. And he used to have a pile of a'mal, at the end he has a pile of sin, a giant mountain of sin. So this is a bankrupt person, and this is how severe uh, the, the hukuk of people are. 
That's why we have to be extra careful when we deal with other people throughout our day. Inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can forgive whatever is between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when it comes to other people, we have to be extra careful, inshallah. And so it's, it's, it's a very uh, serious matter. I think five more minutes? Okay, so let's read one hadith, inshallah. So those are the conditions, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to do tawbah. It's, it's a huge uh, ni'mah in, in a surah, surah al-tahrim uh, that, that we've recited last night. Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu tubu ilallahi tawbatan nasuha. O believers, do a cure tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Turn completely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Wallahi inni la astaghfirullaha wa atubu ilayhi fil yawmi akthar min sab'ina marra. It's in Sahih al-Bukhari, also in Sahih Muslim. Nabi Sallallahu says, by Allah, I take an oath that I seek Allah's forgiveness and I repent to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala on a daily basis more than 70 times. This is the Nabi of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. All of his sins, if there were any sins, they're forgiven. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi doesn't sin. Scholars say that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was at a continuous stage of, of uh, you know, spiritual progression towards Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. So when he was at spiritual heights, then when he looks back and he said that I could have done more dhikr at that time, that is the istighfar of the Anbiya and Muslim. They don't sin. It's whatever is tark of awla, meaning he didn't do what he felt was the best at that specific situation. If it was that so, then then that, that is what he is doing uh, istighfar for. But for us, this is a lesson. If our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi is doing istighfar and tawbah so much on a daily basis, how much should we do it? How often should we do it? Some scholars say that after Fajr, can do it a hundred times after Asr also a hundred times along with other Azkar inshallah those are really good times after Fajr and after Asr to do the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you may be asking in this hadith Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says istighfar and tawbah what's the difference so make it very easy astaghfirullah is I'm sorry tawbah is I won't do it again right sometimes you wrong someone and you say I'm sorry and then the person is like, as long as you don't do it again. So it's clearly two different things. If you want complete forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have to do, I'm sorry. And we have to do, not do it again. Make that firm resolve. So just istighfar alone won't wipe away the sin. If we just say, I'm sorry, that's not going to erase the sin. Those three conditions of tawbah are necessary. One more hadith, inshallah, and then we'll finish. This is a very beautiful hadith. In a narration in Sahih Muslim, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said Lallahu ashaddu farahan bi tawbati abdihi hina yatubu ilayh Min ahadikum kana ala rahilatihi bi ardi falat Fanfalatat minhu alayha ta'amuhu wa sharabuhu fa ayisa minha Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam paints a picture Whether this is real or it's an example That's irrelevant to us But the picture is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more pleased And more happy with the tawbah of any one of his slaves then, and then Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam paints the picture, an individual, one of you, he was on his conveyance, it's a camel, in the middle of the desert, uh, you know, what do they call it, uh, the, the empty quarter in, in Saudiya, they have just like, just hundreds of miles of, it's, it's an ocean of, of sand. So this person, he's on his camel, and he's in this ocean of sand, just imagine just, everywhere you look is just sand, sand dunes. So now he's, he's, he's on his camel and then he gets off and then his camel runs away. So he's in the middle of nowhere and it, his camel runs away. And his food was on the camel, his drink was on the camel, everything that he had was on this camel. Imagine you're driving somewhere and you get stranded. You get out of your car, you're looking around and someone jumps in your car and then takes your car and is gone. Or your car just, you know, run out of gas. You're just stranded, no signal, nothing. Absolutely nothing. So then he becomes, this person becomes despondent. He's waiting, waiting, nothing. And so he sees a shrub nearby, and then he goes and he, he, he sits by the shrub, and there's a little bit of shade, and he just sits there and he's waiting for death. He's like, I'm gonna die here. There's no, you can walk a thousand miles this way, a thousand miles the other way, there's nothing around. Without that conveyance, he has no, no success, uh, no, no chance of life. So he's despondent, he sits there, and he's just waiting, he's just, I'm just gonna die. That's how despondent he is. Then he's sitting there and he's looking down. He lifts his eyes and then he sees the camel just standing in front of him. 
And now it's like he got a new life. His camel just came back to him and he has the food on there, he has a drink. He's so happy. And so he jumps up and he grabs the reins of the camel. And he says, he got confused, his tongue got twisted because he was so happy. He says, Allahumma anta abdi wa ana rabbuk. Oh Allah, you are my slave and I'm your rabb. But that, that's because he made a mistake. He was trying to say the opposite. Anta rabbi wa ana abduk. But he was so happy he said the opposite. So Nabi Sallallahu the point of this, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saying, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala is more happy when we do tawbah than this person's happiness. Can you imagine how happy this person must be? Imagine some time in your life, the most happy you ever were. This is, this is, this is probably the most happiest moment of this person's life. That his, his life is saved. Imagine how happy we were. The, just think of one situation, whether that was at the birth of your child or at a graduation or just when the family was together or something. Or knowing that you got laid until Qadr because every night you stood up, not just the 27th. So, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more happy than that when we do tawbah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need to accept our tawbah. We need to do tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but He's waiting for us. He's waiting for us to do tawbah. It's just us. We need, to, we need to seize that opportunity. Last few nights, the best time to do it is right now. So that we come out of this month, we have enough strength, enough josh, enough, enough uh, you know, power in, in us to continue with this amal, inshaAllah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us that, that doba and give us the ladha, the, the desire and, and the taste of worship, inshaAllah. That's what Ramadan is for. It's la'allakum tattaqun so that you can taste doba, so you can experience uh, taqwa, so that you can get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And once you really feel the taqwa, that's the whole point. Just feel it for a second and know that there's nothing better than in the entire universe. And that, that'll keep you going for the rest of your entire life. So la'allakum tattaqun, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fasting is prescribed for you so that you can have taqwa. It's just for a second. If you just have, you feel it for a second, inshallah, then you will leave everything behind. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that type of enjoyment in worship, in communicating with Him, in, in making dua, in standing in salah. Sometimes you put your head in sajda, you don't want to get up. We want that type of feeling, inshallah. And we want closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Him for that. وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين جزاكم الله خيرا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته